The key findings was that the there was a change in attitude to the use of telehealth pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. So the fact that it actually enabled continuity of care and people actually got a lived experience of how to use it. Um, and so they became much more comfortable with using that technology, as did our patients. So our patients also found that it was a safe and convenient way to conduct healthcare with the usual provider. I think uh, some of the other things were that um, video was not as commonly used as telephone, that telephone was actually quite adequate for many of the consultations. And that was also a key finding. I'm always wary of answering questions about the future, <laughs> a prediction, but what do, we, what do we hope for? We hope for a way of enabling patient care, and it has to be, as we said in this conference, patient-centred delivery. So um, talking about convenience for patients, using e-scripts has been a really big game changer for a lot of people, um, being able to deliver those straight to the chemist so the patient doesn't even have to come in, they can use telehealth, and the script's already delivered to the, to the pharmacy. Those sorts of things which make it easier for patients. We've, we've all got busy lives, and um, enabling that access to care wherever a patient is with their usual provider, I think that's a really big plus and we'd like to see that enabled. M&D Panzara talked here about the fact that she's got a patient who travels all over the place but can still contact her own doctor, M&D, for continuous care and that's excellent because we do hold a lot of you know, tacit knowledge about that patient, how they receive care, how they, how they access care in our heads and it may not be necessarily recorded. So knowing that patient really well has a great uh, outcome as we know on patient uh, health. The gaps are, as I referred to the research paper on the inverse health care, which is that the most vulnerable populations with the most chronic complex uh, medical conditions uh, lower down the socioeconomic scale have the greatest need of access to health care and they may be the various very people who have difficulty managing digital technology so we've got to be very mindful that we are not talking about necessarily uh, an executive in a high uh, end building whose health care needs are certainly valid but th that person in the high end uh, executive will have easier access to health care um, compared to someone who's uh, not able to manage their, their even getting to a bus stop. Um, so these are the, the, you know, the hidden populations. Uh, we heard also at the conference about the LGBTIQ populations who may have difficulty with discrimination. We also know about our Indigenous population and closing the gap where there may be interest, uh, areas of low trust and our culturally and linguistically diverse populations. They are going to need particular and precise solutions in a digital revolution. I think that's a technologist question. I actually think Steve Jobs did a good, uh, a good uh, effort of, of managing that and moving, um, and maybe it wasn't Steve Jobs, maybe it was someone else, but of moving technology um, and phone technology and video platforms into one device. And the fact that, you know, even in very remote areas of um, other countries with low resources, like Africa, many people have access to mobile phone. I mean, that's a really huge difference in our access to technology. And by integrating that solution, I think, um, um, we'll, we'll have to find a way. The issue will be the security of those devices and how we manage that. Look, I don't know those two particular companies uh, precisely, um, but in general terms, we would advocate for continuity of care. And as I mentioned, there's a really fine line between what I call consumerism, which is utilising a business model to derive income and profit, uh, compared to healthcare, which is a profession-based um, science. So it is, it's just being really careful with not fragmenting care. I mean, everyone sees health as a series of tasks, but it's not. It's a lifetime of care over that per, uh, and a whole person care. We heard a psychiatrist on the panel talk about he, he actually treats people. And I think that's where we need to go with that, not, not looking at task-driven care.
think that's a really good question and I think um, that's something that we need to look at particularly in terms of convenience and access to care. I think as the model changes you can see with the funding revolution as I call this not a digital or technological revolution this is a funding revolution if we got uh, funds because funds were cut uh, away back for after hours care if they uh, were restored I think you might find that uh, again that delivery would be more enabled. Thank you.